Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Forza Motorsport 3. Today is episode number 27. If you want to help support the channel, then leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe, and feel free to check out the other videos in the Forza Mega Series. Now let's get into the content. This video was streamed live on Twitch. Come watch us live with the link in the description. If you want to get cheap game keys for Xbox, PlayStation or PC, then check out Eniba in the description down below. Alright, so we are here for the Audi Club. Uh, and we're going to be taking the Audi R8 for this one. Da -da 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 -da. Uh, Amalfi Coast, New York Circuit, Maple Valley and then Sunset Peninsula Raceway. Let's get going. All right, here we go. So we've got set 26 hours on the actual um, timer so far. Tesco shopping trolley. Charming. Tesco's. Oh, wow. That thing has acceleration. Okay. Not bad. Oh, slow down, slow down. Come on, come on. Get back. There you go. This thing is very quick. <laughs> Do you know one thing I find really weird about the law in the UK? Unexpected item in the bagging area. Please remove before continuing. <laughs> Do you know what I find really weird about um, the law in the UK? Is the fact that um, if you're below... 1.35 meters in height you must have a booster seat whether you're an adult or a child it does not matter if you're below one meter and 35 centimeters you have to be in a booster seat right the problem with that is the fact what if you're one meter 34 it just seems to be a really weird like i understand putting like a child that just doesn't sit still in a booster seat because like you know it's it's kind of like a keeping them in their place kind of thing but like the height thing kind of confusing bonk yes Kodo, that is very brave to announce that I'm two inches. Oh no, my name's Cotto. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. So I know this is an eight class vehicle, but this feels really fast for an eight class car. Have a look at the interior of the car. Look at that. I'm not gonna lie, it does seem very zoomed in and very fake, this uh, interior camera. I think it's quite cool though. Uh, no, I'm avoiding World Tour as well. It's just additional races that I don't need to do because all World Tour does is uh, complete some of the event list games uh, races so if I'm going through all of the events 
It just means either I've got a really un terribly structured event list playthrough. Um, or I'm ending up doing the same races twice. So, at that point, I'm just deciding, nah, I will just race it. Uh, this is um, Death and Desire by Knife Party. It's fucking brilliant. Oh my god. So, uh, it turns out AI cars don't like corners. Ah, we're level 37. Let's go. Uh, Nissan 23 Nismo. Ah, oh, is this an R3? We got 10% discount on driveline upgrades by Audi Motorsport. I kid you not. A friend that I knew said Audi once, and I completely fucking flipped out. It's Audi, you bastards! Anyways. That's nice. And I have a feeling that's an R2 car as well. So some people just... I don't even know. Because when it comes to Audi... The only logical option... That I would understand if someone said... Would be AUD. If someone went AUD... No, it's Audi. Like, that's all it is. But, Audi? Audi? Where'd you... Like, for you to pronounce the or sound requires there to be at least an O present. There isn't even an O. Epic, what is up? How are you today? Epic is first in the chat. Let's go. Woo woo! Oh, I wasn't paying attention! I was looking at the speedo. Let's see how fast the car could go. <laughs> yeah, Audi. Oh, and Americans. Oh my god, I hate Americans when it... Uh, that's going to get clipped out of context. I hate it when Americans say stuff deliberately wrong. Like, it's not even... Oh yeah, I speak English. No, you don't. Like, Porsche. Porsche. Do, 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 do. Cardo, thank you for the pound donation. Thank you very much. Appreciate it, man. <laughs> Pay attention, mate. You need to keep relying on your eyes or you will die. Lovely. I need to rely on my eye testicles more. Because eyeball... Never mind, I'm not even explaining that one. It was terrible. Anyone that says Lamborghini is a spanner. Unless you're taking the pits. Oh look, I'm going. To, I'm going to jump into a Lamborghini. You know, it's like Lamborghini, Maserati, Ferrari. You know. To be fair, Maserati 
and Ferrari are fairly self-explanatory. If you get that wrong, then you really need help. Hey, appreciate it, Cotto. You should be able to uh, share a sub-message um, at some point. Once it hits that one month and it goes over to a two-month sub, you should be able to share it. Ah, yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Meow. Come with... Never mind. Come with me to the dance floor. <laughs> you and me, because that's what it's for. This is a tune. Spin! Bop! Ah, oh, you hit the wall, you plunker! <laughs> we got eight grand for that. Not bad. Here we go, seven grand. We've got a 10% discount on clutch upgrades by Sax Germany. It's probably Sax. Knowing the German accent. Need for Speed Remaster. Ah, oh, fair enough. Yeah, that's not that's not too bad of a um, game to actually get the trophies for. Oh my god. That wheel spin was pretty neat, oh, actually. Nito Bandito. I love the fact that I was allowed to take this car in this event. Unpopular opinion. But the Audi R8, even though it is exactly the same car, the Audi R8 is better in every way, shape and form than the Lamborghini because the Audi just seems to suit the engine noise more than the Lamborghini. It seems... It looks better. It doesn't look like a, oh, look at me, I'm driving a Lamborghini. It's, a, it's a quite a subtle but nice looking car. And it's also half the price, pretty much. to be doing and the music in our house people are predicting the new Lamborghini uh, whatever's coming after the event at all um, they're thinking that the new Lamborghini is going to be coming out potentially next year or like revealed next year or very late this year there's obviously been some rumours going around and some like fake drawings and shit like that, but like an actual official press release reveal potentially in the next year or so. Also, yeah, I will agree with that as well. The Eurus is basically just a Q8 with less trunk, but I think the Lamborghini is slightly different because it's got a slightly more powerful engine. It's sort of got that more Lamborghini heritage to it than the Q8 does. I prefer the design of the Lamborghini Urus. Perfectly honest. You gotta get a lock on your door, man. I'd punch anyone that comes into my room. Literally. <laughs> get the fuck out! I honestly hate it when people come into my room and, like, touch stuff and shit. 
Like, people might see my room as messy, but it's an organized mess. It's everything is where I know it is and all that. In my own little bubble, it's as messy as can be. Yeah, it wasn't that, um... It was slap hitting all the kids and then the, the parents were like, You can't do that! And then he started slapping them and then just slapped everyone. And then slapped the police and all that. Yeah, I've seen that one. Not bad. <laughs> no, I'm just going to get a mechanism on my door. You know the sucker punch wall from Total Wipeout? I'll just get a massive one of them. And just as soon as someone walks in, just pop <laughs> to the side of the head. That's a brilliant idea. We got eight grand for that and we're level three. We got a 10% discount on valves, upgrades by Audi Motorsport. Nice. All right, here we go. I love the rims on the Audi, though. I'll be totally honest. I love the design of them. They are some beautiful rims. Be the one to set you free. Go. Good first lap so far. We're just beating up the rest of the Simp Boss now. Simp Boss is finally getting close to being below 10,000 HP. Which is awesome. So uh, if anyone wants to kill him off, £100 donation, that'll, that'll get rid of him. Didn't this car have a fully manual gearbox as well? Yeah, it's a fully manual. It's not got flappy paddles on the wheel. Though, to be fair, they probably didn't map it in for this game. I do like how much detail they actually put into the interiors of this game. I mean, you think they've got track temperature, they've got current lap time, last lap time, best lap time. All in uh, one thing. We just have to show him our love by punching him to the death. Yes. That is a great form of uh, love. In the modern day, I guess. Oh, I'm not turning. That's lovely.
Why is the damage thing not coming up? The damage indicator is not there. Okay, so we damaged a little bit of the brake disc. Yeah, who needs cornering? Cornering's for pussies. There you go. Lovely job, Blair. It's eight grand. Got to drive the Audi for a little bit. And uh, we're probably not going to drive the Audi for a while. Okay, we've got 12 grand. Result. All right, so we're here now for the Corvette track days. Uh, and we're going to be taking the a Corvette. I'm a bit ashamed of this, but we are going to be taking an R2 car, which is well above the performance ranking that we need to be. But uh, I need to save up money so I can get a million credits, and I don't want to buy a really expensive car. So, starting off with, uh, starting off with Camino Vallo de Montserrat, Circuit de Catalunya, Silverstone, and then Amalfi Coast. Let's get going. All right, here we go. Oh, this is going to be unfair. Oh! I'm a very happy man. Yeah, this is unfair. <laughs> but I don't care. To be fair, though, this car's not going to do very well around these tighter corners. Because once this car gets slow enough, it, it loses all its downforce. It's very fair, they just suck at driving. Yeah! We're going all Forza Motorsport 1 on their asses. Just bringing an overpowered car to an event and cranking the AI up to 11. That's what I am, basically. I'm getting my payback. Born in the 80s. 80s. I am surprised that the game let us take this car, to be honest. And this is one of very few times that I'm actually going to do this. Right, my goal for this is to get below one minute. A sub one minute lap time. Let's see if we can do it. Rally be like no tires and only have third gear but still comes first. What can happen? I mean, there's been instances, if you look at, um, what is it, the Finnish rally that came up a couple of, well, probably about a month ago now, um, Esa Pekalapi ended up rolling his car, destroying the entire roof and windscreen on the second to last stage, but still managed to push to get a third place finish. Which is pretty impressive when you think about it. Like a car that gets beaten up that badly. And it's just like, yeah, brush it off. We got this. Especially the fact that the car didn't have any rear wing, which meant rear end stability is gone. Basically. Oh yeah, 59.4. That's what I was aiming to get.
go. Move, slow call that. Get out of the way. There you go. To be honest, this car doesn't feel like it's cornering very well. I feel like I'm lifting off the throttle more than I should have to. I love how this song has come to the start of the playlist when I press shuffle. It's a good song. I really like it. <laughs> Move! Coming through. There we go. Lovely. Serious? Yeah, that's the American way of thinking of things. Mm, this car isn't fast enough around the track. What should we do? More power! We now have a 40% discount on ignition upgrades by Champion. Nice. I thought Motorsport 4 only had Jeremy Clarkson. Did it have Richard and James as well? Oh, pretty little woman, I don't... You're the only girl my heart beats for. Ah, fair enough. The only thing that I'm concerned about Motorsport 8 is the fact that they might do rolling events. Because a lot of people are suggesting the idea that they're going to go to a life service model, which if they do, it's... It's going to be fun. But I'm not going to be able to play it as a playthrough. A lot of people won't be able to play through that game. They'll only be able to just enjoy it. And as much enjoyment that you can get out of Forza before you get bored of it, that's all you'll get. There's an if they do go down the live service route, there, there will be minimal incentives. So when you think about stuff like Fortnite, uh, Halo... Call of Duty, all of those games, they don't really have much incentives other than the gameplay that they offer. At least with this game, there's incentives to actually, like, improve. Um, to earn more cars. Complete missions, complete races, complete events, whatever. There's actually an incentive. This, uh, new motorsport... If they go live service, it probably won't have any incentive to actually fucking play it, let's be honest. There was Monkey, Snail, and American in-game. Uh, so live service is uh, sort of the term that's used for a game that's just constantly updated and constantly cycling content. It's, it's also classed as an always online game as well. So if you think something like Fortnite, that's class is like a live service game. Yeah, pretty much. The one thing I hate in video games, like, with a passion, is weekly events. Events that give you rewards, but you only have a week to do them. Time-sensitive events. Hate them. By all means, add a new event every week, and it stays, and the rewards stay there. Yeah, but when you think about it, right, the crew too, for a lot of people, when it comes to a live service model, I 
here's the thing with live service models is it's almost like a lazy way for developers to say hey let's not make games let's just keep a game alive for longer than it needs to be alive let's not innovate let's not this let's not that uh we've now got a 40 percent discount on fuel system upgrades nice so yeah i, I will agree that the way the crew 2 does add content sort of like that live service formula the crew 2's done a good job they've added content but the problem with that is because the game's gotten into a point where they they the gaming industry knows that you can't sell a game for full price for long always has been always will be so what does the crew 2 do um they then sell overpriced season passes like fortnite does but this is for a game that you already pay for so you've already paid for it whether you've paid for it really cheap because it's in its fourth year or whether you've paid for it at the start of the game when it was on you had to buy it for 60 pounds no matter where you're buying it in that cycle, you're buying the game. So for them to go um, and turn around to then sell overpriced battle passes and stuff like that to get more money from you is a really scummy thing that Ubisoft has done. And especially that it is limited time as well. So a game that you pay for, you can give them money to be in with a chance of having that stuff. There's no guarantee that you'll have it. And that's what I don't like. Um, when it comes to... Uh, what's it called? Horizon 5. Granted, I don't like the limited time events. But the rewards for them are always free. You don't have to pay for them. So that's a bonus. But... I still hate limited time events. I would much rather them add um, a couple of events that are permanently there that you can unlock whenever you feel like going to do it. Even if they sold it as a DLC pack where you had like 100 missions that you could do for £8 and there was 20 cars to unlock, for example. Or £16, whatever. However much, as long as if I'm paying for something, I know what I'm getting and that I am going to get it all, I don't care. But that is a huge problem that... And I, I still don't understand why gamers still accept the Battle Pass format. Like, free Battle Passes are fine, don't get me wrong, like... It, it's free. You can't complain about it. Sure, I again, like I said, I don't like limited time stuff. But if it's free, it can get swept under the rug. As long as it doesn't take the focus away from core gameplay. Come on, you couldn't at least move over. But when it comes to, um, like, Fortnite, I can't believe that gamers look at that and say, Hmm, here's a pass. To be in with a chance of earning these skins and it costs me £12 to get it. That seems like a good idea, to have a chance. Yeah. Eye racing is terrible. So, the actual simulation is fairly enjoyable. It's not a terrible simulation, it's not amazing, but it's pretty good. There's some immersion, it's, it's nice. The only problem is, you pay how much money a month? £12 a month to have access to the game. Which already is more expensive than any game is ever going to spend on a game just in six months. Let alone the fact that, oh, you still have to pay beyond the six months worth. And on top of that, if you want any extra cars, you have to pay for those. Quite a lot of money. So, I don't... Yeah. So, you have to spend more money on a rented game for DLCs. If you stop paying for that, do you still get access to the stuff that you had before? No. 
No. So you lose access. I think it is the stupidest thing ever. And we've now got a 40% discount on differential upgrades by Eaton Posse. Nice. Literally drive a wallet for piles of pixels and polygons. I understand if iRacing is the only thing that you ever play, then fair enough. But if uh, I find people that only play one video game are typically quite a boring kind of person anyways. Um, because they don't experiment. They don't try and find new stuff. They just stick with what. And I mean, that that's fair enough. Like, if you always resort to a favorite game, like, I will do that a lot. But people that literally only play one game, like, well, I don't know, World of Warcraft, fucking League of Legends. I don't know any other examples. Valorant, Fortnite. If you only play one game, it's, it's such a boring life. Yeah, exactly. But, like, there are a lot of free games going out nowadays. Especially with, like, Games for Gold, Game Pass, stuff like that. There's no excuse to not be able to afford to try new games anymore. Game, pa game Pass Ultimate is the best deal in gaming now. There is no better deal. I mean, you look at Game Pass Ultimate, you get 200 games on PC. You get about 300 on Xbox. And you get, um, what's it called? You get EA Play included. So you get the EA stuff. I think that, that actually, I take it back, the best deal in gaming, Xbox All Access. A games console that you can buy, that you pay for thir uh, 24 or 32 months, I'm not sure, or 36. But it's like a subscription, you pay, it, well it's not a subscription, it's a contract more than anything. Um, a subscription is something you can cancel whenever, this is like a contract you have to pay. But it's like $24.99 a month. You get yourself an Xbox console. 24 months of Game Pass. All for $24 a month. That's a bloody brilliant deal. Especially if you can't justify spending like £500 on a game console just straight up like that. And then to spend more money on games. £25 a month for two years. Yeah. As obviously, I'm buying a lot of my stuff on Steam so that I own them. Um, only reason is because I have the intention that I want to get a Steam Deck. Um, so I'm trying to avoid buying my games elsewhere other than Steam. Because I know even though the Epic Games launcher and the Rockstar launchers, they all work on the Steam Deck. It is a pain in the ass, but I'm planning, hopefully, maybe in February time next year, that I can buy a Steam Deck. Because obviously after holiday, I'm going back onto the job search. So in about a month's time, basically. Um, and once I'm done, once I find somewhere, it's perfect excuse to get it. Not bad. We got eight grand for that. I will take it. remember adding this to my playlist, but okay. 
we're finally at the half a million mark. Woohoo! So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one. Peace out. Oh.